Now here I put down the difference between God's grace and God's law. And God's law I dis divide into two areas. One is what we do, the commandments. Okay? And then warning. The law also has warning. Okay, so God's grace. Uh, he, God loves us. That is His grace. He loves us. His action. He loves us. And then law, we should love God. That is law. Now, some people think law is, I mean, uh, we love God is, is grace. No. What we do is law. That God loves us. God gives to us. That is His grace. Whatever God gives to us. So, grace always start with God. God loves us. God cares about us. God has a wonderful plan for us. God helps us. God rewards us. God remember what we do. God prepares heaven for us. That is uh, God's grace. And then the law is what we do. We love God. We pray to God. We trust in God. We love other people. All these are law. What we do. Okay. So it start with we, or 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 you should do it, or we should do it. Okay. So God's grace is He loves us, and then God's law is that we love God. And I'll explain this later. The warning. Okay. God accepts us, and then we. So that's God doing something for us, and then we would love people. We accept other people. So that is our action. Law is our action. Okay. Grace, He cares about us. And then He provides for us. So all the things He does for us to bless us is grace. To bless us. Okay. God has planned for us. God gives strength, gifts, and opportunity to us. Okay. And then God exalts and reward us. God will exalt our life and He will reward us. So all these are God's action to bless us. Okay? And the law is what we do. We love God. We love people. We forsake sins. We put down our sins. Say no to sins. We pursue holiness. And we love our family. We have compassion on people. We do evangelism. We build up spiritual life for people. We build up the church. All these are the law. Okay. And a warning. God disciplines Christians who are not faithful, who are lazy, who sins. God will discipline them. And God punish them, punishes them too. God can punish. The Bible does say that. And sin would destroy family, life, church, and future. So the warning in the Bible is that uh, the fruit of the flesh is it's a destruction. So if we sow to the flesh, we'll reap destruction. So when we sin, there will be destruction. Satan will come to destroy, come to steal, kill, and destroy. And we can lose our peace and our self-image. And the worst thing is that we can lose salvation. Okay? Now what I want to say is that the law is not bad. It's not bad. But we should not be motivating people with the law only. Now, motivating people with the law would be like this. You have to love God, we have to pray. Now, that's true. But we tell them, when you, God loves you so much. When you love God, God is very happy. God will bless you. So we motivate people to love God, to obey God, to obey the law by telling them the promises of God. That is what the Bible does. What Jesus and God does. Uh, they do that all the time. They give us the reason, the motivation to obey. But many Christians and even pastors, they just tell people, you have to do this, you have to do that. Uh, if you don't do it, God will punish you. Uh, there will be bad consequences. Now that is true. Those things are true. But the point is, we don't just tell people, you have to do this. If not, you'll, you'll be punished. But we tell them. That when you obey God, God is very happy and God will reward you and God will give you strength and God will raise your life to a higher level. So we want to motivate people with God's grace. We don't just tell people what to do. Okay? And how God's grace and promises motivate us to obey and serve Him. So His grace and promises will motivate us to, to obey and serve Him. 
God treasures us and wants to raise us to a high level. So He treasures us. This, now this is the grace of God to motivate us to obey and serve Him. This is how we can encourage people to obey and serve God. God treasures you and He wants to raise you up to a high level. God wants to do things uh, to bless you. God wants to raise you up to a higher level. And God's grace and promises motivate us. He has His grace and His promises. He promised you to bless us. He promised to remember us. He pro promised to protect us and pre provide for us. And God gave us strength and talents. So He will give us strength to serve Him. He gave us talents. Uh, he gave us spiritual gifts. And God give us opportunities and strategic plans to use our life. So God will provide opportunities so that we can serve God, that we have more opportunities to serve God. And, um, and He will give us strategic plans. That means the plans will not be just doing miscellaneous things without purpose. But God's plan is that there are specific goals. Strategic means that there are strategies to achieve specific goals. And God has the plan. He will put us into the strategic plan. Like what I'm doing now, training to African pastors and any other pastor, any, anyone who is watching this video now, this is strategic plan to bring blessings to you in order to use our lives. And God appreciates and reward those who sincerely obey and serve Him. When we serve Him, God appreciates that and reward us. So we, we can tell people, God treasures you. You are very precious. You are very important. God raised you up to a high level. And He has many promises. He has many areas of grace, many kinds of grace that He will give to you, that He will bless you. And He will give you strength and talents and spiritual gifts and He will give you opportunities and strategic plan to use your life. And then He will appreciate what you do for Him and He will reward you for those who sincerely uh, love, obey and serve Him. Okay, I want to discern motivation by law and motivation by grace. Okay, and what are the differences? Okay, now, when people are motivated by the law, sometimes they would have guilt. The reason is, if people just tell others, you have to obey, you have to uh, put down your sins, you have to love God, you spend more time praying. Now, when people cannot do it, they will feel guilty. Okay, so that's where the guilt comes from. And because most people cannot do it perfectly well, that is why they have guilt. But motivation by grace would, have, would, feel, would be filled with acceptance and forgiveness. That God accepts us where we are. Now, where you are, you might not be a very strong person, but whatever you do in your position, if you start to love God, God is very happy. So God accepts you even though you are not perfect yet. When you try you, know, you in, try to improve, God is very happy and He will help you. He will bless you and He will forgive you when we repent of our sins. So that's the difference. But when people just use the law, just use the guilt, they will say, you still haven't uh, done evangelism much. You still haven't obeyed God in every area. You still have sins. When people just point out the shortcomings of people, people will feel pressure. They are under pressure. We don't want to put people under pressure. We want to, we want to tell them, you are improving. So we look at the positive sides instead of negative sides. But many people look at the negative sides, even parents. Tell the children, you have to work hard now. That's true. You have to work hard. If not, you become, among Chinese, some Chinese would say, you become a beggar. You're good for nothing. But we can tell them, you're precious. God has a wonderful plan in your life. If you love God and obey God, God is very happy and God will reward you. So there are all kinds of reasons that you obey God and do your homework and study well and God is very happy with you. That is motivation by grace instead of motivation by guilt. 
motivation by guilt will be saying, see, you, you have done all these things wrong, you're not doing well, you are, you are, you are a bad child, this is motivation by the law and by guilt, by pointing out the problems only and what they have to do. And when motivation by the law, people are under pressure. But by grace, is no pressure. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't try our best when we're under grace. Let me tell you, you know, I, I can, you know, all the ministry I do now, I do it voluntarily. I don't do it for pay. I can just sit back and rest and don't do anything. But I'm motivated to do it. I, all day long, from morning till night time, other than the time I spend with my wife, I spend praying, I spend eating and doing other things. All the time I have, I will keep writing and do training for people. I, I'm writing books to train people. I, and I help people all the time. That's what I do all the time. And I'm not serving with pressure. I'm saying, God is very happy with everything I do. Whatever I do for God, God is very happy. And God will remember all this and God will reward me. Now, when I serve, I don't look for the reward. But I know that God will reward me. I'm happy because of that. But I just don't just look for reward. I just want to bless people. So I have no pressure, even though I work very hard. From morning till nighttime, I don't waste my time. Okay, now when mo people are motivated by the law, they have a sense of failure. They, they always say, oh, I don't do well enough. I still have sin. But motivation by grace will say, okay, now you have sinned. When you, when you repent of your sin, God is very happy and God will forgive you and God will give you strength to overcome your sins. And then when they have failure, we'll say, okay, now we learn from the failure. This time you fail in this thing. Well, next time you try to do better. How can we do better? And then when you do better, God is very happy with you. Whatever improvement you have, you uh, God is very happy with you. So don't just look at what you have failed, but look at what we have learned from the failure and whatever you do to improve, God is very happy. So then he would have a sense of accomplishment. And then when people are motivated by the law, they like to compare. They like to, they like to uh, just compare. Oh, uh, he, uh, I do better than he. I'm better than he. Or he is better than me, so I'm not happy. Now, when motivated by grace, people will praise other people. He's doing well. God is happy with him. I'm happy for him. He is loving God. He's obeying God. And then, motivated by the law, people would want to compete. They want to be better than other people. Now, we, you know, it's okay to, that we want to do better than other people. It's okay. But we don't have a spirit of competition. At the same time, we want to do better. And it's saying that we want, want to help other people to do better. We don't just want to be better than they. We just want to be better than me today. Tomorrow I'll be better. I keep improving. So I, I want to improve, but I don't want to step down on people uh, uh, to make people feel bad in order to make myself feel good. I don't have to compete with people. I can compete with myself, but not under pressure. I'm not serving God under pressure. And instead of competing, I want to help other people. And you know, helping people is also building up ourselves. Now that is not, a lot of people don't understand. Some people say, okay, I, I'm better than you, I'm better than you. That is not the Christian way. The Christian way is that I'm willing to help you. When I help you, God is happy that I'm helping you and God will bless me. So I'm happy to bless other people. Blessing other people is blessing myself. And then when people are motivated by the law, they are critical of self and others. Then they will say, they don't do so well, I don't do so well, and then they feel guilty. But motivated by grace, they see the goodness of themselves and others. They will see that, uh, 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 thank God I have improved. And thank God someone has improved. So they will look at uh, the goodness and the improvement of other people. Okay? Now it's very important that we understand how come um, there is such a teaching of motivation by grace? Because God is the one who is doing it. God has given us promises that it's not hard to please God. In the following slides, I will show you how God is happy with anything we do. God is happy with anything 
any way we obey Him and love Him and serve Him. So it's not hard to please Him, even when we're not perfect. Whatever we try to do, God is very happy. Although it's impossible to be perfect, that none of us is perfect. We don't have to be perfect in order to please God. Now, people under the law, motivated by the law, they always say, I still have to improve, I still have to improve. Now, I want to improve, but I would say, there is more room for improvement. God will help me and I will continue to improve that. I can improve peacefully and joyfully. I'm not improving under pressure. But perfectionists, they are under pressure. They always say, I'm not doing well enough. I have to work hard. I have to work hard. Now, <clears throat> I work hard too, but I don't say I have to work hard. I say I gladly work hard. I gladly serve God and God is very happy. So we don't have to be perfect to please God. Now, of course, I want to be more perfect. I want to be more perfect. I want to, uh, to overcome all sins. I want to use my time in the best way to bless more people. I want to be more and more perfect that my teaching can improve, can improve with time. But before I become better, I'm still, I, I still know that God is happy with, with whatever improvement I, I make. Even a little child, they make a little improvement. God is very happy. So it's very important that it's not hard to please God. It's not hard to please God. Whatever we do, even a little thing, God is very happy. Okay, I'm going to show you the verses. So when we repent, the whole heaven rejoices. So even when we are not so good, when we have done something wrong, but when we repent, God is very happy with us. In Luke 17, uh, 15, 7, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So in heaven, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. One sinner who repents, the whole heaven rejoices. So whenever we've done something wrong and we repent, God is very, very happy. God is very, very happy. God will bless us whenever we repent. So we, we can say, God, you are so happy with me. You would, you would uh, bless me whenever I repent. You are very happy. The whole heaven will rejoice. So now I'm, I'm not happy that I have sinned. Now, of course, I try my best to overcome my sins. Whenever I have any sinful thoughts, immediately I will take care of it. I won't let the sinful thoughts affect me. And then if I have any sin, immediately I will say, I'm sorry for my sins, please forgive me. And then I trust in God's forgiveness. And then I'll say, God is very happy that I repent now. I don't just stay looking, keep looking at my faults, my sins. But I'll say, when I repent, God is very happy and God will for sure forgive me. So that way, that way I'm very happy anytime I repent. So I hope that we can encourage people. Whenever you repent, God is very happy and He will bless you and reward you. So it's not hard. Even when we sin, when we fail, we ask God to forgive us and God will forgive us. Okay, and we receive the spirit of adoption to sonship, not the spirit of slavery. So God gives us the spirit of son, of a son. God doesn't give us the spirit of a slave. Romans 8.15 For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out about Father. So we did not receive the spirit of bondage, of being a slave to fear, but received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out about Father. So God has given us the spirit of to cry out, Abba, Father, you're my Father, I love you. Oh, Father, I love you. And you love me. I can relax in you. I can enjoy you. So God has given us the spirit of adoption, spirit of sonship. So, so God wants us to relax. God doesn't want us to be under pressure. He wants us to relax and believe that he is very happy with us. He, when we trust in Him and follow Him, He is very happy with us. We are His children. So Christians should always be happy that we are children. And it's not hard to be close to God. 
James 4, 8, come near to me and he will come near to you. So when we come near to God, God will come near to us. It's not hard. Now some people think God is very far away because they say, I don't feel anything when I pray. We don't have to feel anything. But if we love God more, we can feel more peace and even love and joy. And, but even when we don't feel anything, we will say, God is happy that I pray to Him. He will come to me and He will bless me. And also, Jesus said in John 15, 4, Remain in me as I also remain in you. When we stay in Jesus, He will stay in us. So it's not hard to, close, to be close to Him. He will for sure come to bless us when we come to Jesus. In John 15, 5, have an intimate relationship with God. It's not difficult. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. This is a figurative language that we are like the branches connected to the tree, to the vine. And he who abides in Jesus, that Jesus will also abide in him, and he will bear much fruit. So for sure, when we abide in Jesus, Jesus is very happy. He will come and stay with us and He will change us. Now, His, you know, in order to change us, God takes a lot of steps. He will give us the motivation to come close to God. He will teach us how to pray. He will give us peace and take away our burdens when we come to Him and give us joy. And He will give us motivation to spend more time with Him. Then He changed our inner quality so that we will bear fruit. Now these are his, his, uh, the ways that He blesses us, His grace. When we talk about grace, it's not just salvation grace, okay? Please remember this. Grace is not just salvation grace. It's all the things God does to bless us. That is grace, okay? So in order for us to bear fruit, let me say again, how many things does He do? First, the Holy Spirit moves in us so that He will draw us to Him. He will at attract us to come to Him. He will give us peace and take away our burdens when we come to Him. And He will give us love and joy and bless us and give us strength. He will give us stronger motivation to continue to come close to God. And then He will reward us with more strength when we spend more time coming to Him. And He will change our lives so that we'll bear much fruit. The fruit of joy, of peace, of love and kindness and goodness. And also we will have the motivation to bless other people. And then when we do all these things, God is very happy with us and He will reward us. So there are a number of things that He does. So. It's very important to learn from this teaching of mine is actually from the Bible that God does a number of things in order to bless us. So it's not hard to come close to Him because it is Him who first attracts us to come to Him. Okay, so this I hope you try to remember, these few points, what God does in order to attract us to come to Him and to bless us and strengthen us in the process. First, He will attract us, draw us to Him by the Holy Spirit, to attract us to, to spend more time with Him. And then when we come to Him, He will give us joy and peace and love and take away our burdens. And then He will give us uh, how to pray and worship in spirit and in truth how to have more hunger for God so He'll change our hearts so that we hunger for God. And then He'll change our inner qualities. He will change us so that we'll bear fruit, so that we have more love for people, more joy and more peace, and we have uh, the desire to bless other people. These are the fruit of, of ministry that we want to bless more people. And then He will see all these things, He'll remember, and He will reward us. So there are a number of things God does in order to help us to bear fruit. So it's not hard to come to Him at all. So when people say it's hard, we tell them it's not hard. 
you just think of God all the time and thank Him. God, you're so wonderful. I love you. I praise you. I worship you. Then God is very happy. So there is no set formula. We just love Him, worship Him. He is very, very happy. And God blesses those who seek His kingdom. God has given us these promises. So here I'm talking about the promises of God. So God, in order to motivate us, He gives us a lot of motivation to motivate us to follow Him and love Him. In Matthew 6.33, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So when we seek His kingdom, what does seek His kingdom mean? First, we want more people to be saved. Um, we want, now here it says, bring more people into salvation. That is seeking His kingdom. We want the kingdom of God to grow. More people enter the kingdom of God. And also, God's kingdom is where He rules. So if we let God rule our heart, uh, the, God's kingdom is in the heart. If we let God rule our lives in the family, then God's kingdom comes to the family. And if we let God rule the church, then the church becomes His kingdom. Now, there are many churches that only people are ruling, not God. And people are not obeying God. That is not pleasing to God. So when we seek His kingdom, means I want more people saved. I pray for more people to be saved. And I do evangelism to bring more people to Him. And also, I seek His kingship. I want God to be the king in my life. I want God to be ruling my life. I, I seek uh, His uh, will all the time. Then, and I also seek His righteousness. Righteousness has two meanings. First, Jesus' righteousness that is given to all who believe. When we trust in Jesus, He will give us His righteousness. And then also, the righteousness of Christians. We want to obey God, and then we'll have the righteousness of Christians. And all these things will be given to you as well. So God has given us the promise. When you seek His kingdom and His righteousness, all these things will be given to us. So we don't have to worry. When we love God and trust God, obey Him, He will bless us. So I hope we all believe that, that God will give you blessings. Let me tell you, I have more blessings now than ever, even though now I'm not paid to be a minister. In the past, I was, I was paid as a minister. But now I have more blessings to bless more people, more churches, more countries, that God sees that I'm seeking His kingdom, that I want more people saved, and I let, let God be, be the king in my heart. And I'm seeking His righteousness. I want to... I want Jesus' righteousness, and I also want to obey Him. And God is very happy, and He will bless me, and He will do the same to you also. So it's not very hard, because God has given us promises. 